Welcome to Power Drift and let's quickly have a debate. But before we start throwing out jabs and punches at each other, here's the topic of discussion. What is an SUV? Now, some of you might want all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive as standard. Some of you might want seven seats and some of you might want ground clearance that's big enough to drive over boulders. Some of you might want big wheels and tires. But I think the definition of an SUV is different now. Look, evolution, it's inevitable, isn't it? And everything around us has evolved. Everything's new, everything's changed. Similarly, the definition of an SUV has evolved in the last couple of years. And that brings about new sub-segments in the SUV space, like the micro SUV. And in my opinion, the Tata Punch is India's first real micro SUV. Now that's the terminology that I am going to use for this car because I think it deserves it. in our opinion deserves that micro SUV tag because it does look like an SUV. It has all those telltale design bits everywhere. The plastic cladding on the bumpers, the plastic cladding on the doors, the 190 mm of ground clearance, roof rails and with this top spec variant or persona as Tata calls it, it gets a two-tone paint job that makes it look really good. Oh and yes, this color that we drove in general very very premium feels like a color you would find on a brand new iphone or an ipad yes it's really that good now more than just the plastic cladding and the perfect size that i think is absolutely ideal for the city i think it's the stance that really makes this car stand out now look at the wheel arches in the back it's all squared out it's all accentuated around this part i like that i like this little dimple in the handle to put your thumb in sensible very well thought of. Again, squared off wheel arch in the front, nice and muscular. But there's always that one thing in a car, always, that sort of grabs my attention. That one little attention to detail that I always love, I look at and I'm like, hmm, interesting. And in this one, it's this little grill notch. Now, Tata's done this design language for a while now, but look what's behind it. India's favorite thing. That's a horn there. I just hope it isn't a flute or a speaker playing out tabla music if you know what i'm talking about in the near future there are other cute bits too mm, okay not cute not the right word by a long shot let's just stick to interesting like this rhino on the rear window i half expected another cat out there but no it is a rhino and i guess it's there to show how tough the car is and yes that little Tri-Star or whatever design element they call it, it's everywhere too and it is well integrated. It's not just slapped on senselessly. You know what Tata does really well every time they launch a new car? They make an interior that will age well, that will look nice in five years. And that is a tough thing to do, not to get carried away and over-design things. And this is the perfect example. It's all nicely done. It's all horizontally placed out. It's all clinically nicely designed, in my opinion. Now, there are a couple of textures that Tata Motors has played with. You've got one texture on the top here, this sort of brush finish in the middle, and this white panel, which has the typical Tata Motors three-pointed star thingy design element that they've used almost everywhere on the car. And yes, some of the plastics do feel a little bit cheap on the touch, but this is a car that's gonna be designed and built at a price and that's a little excusable to a certain extent. It's not something that comes out and is blatantly in your face like you get on some other cars. Digital and analog instrument cluster, I like that as well. It's a cleanly designed cluster. It's a mix of both. You see it in the Altos and it sort of looks nice here as well. Seven inch touchscreen, very nice and responsive. And since we're at it, let's inaugurate this car, shall we, properly. That's the sort of protective layer off, and this is no longer a new car then. 
Now, apart from what I just mentioned, you do get a lot of features too, like the expected Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, etc. And you also get connected car tech, but it is not standard on any variant, and even the top spec has it only as an option. And of course, in terms of safety, you get ABS and EBD and something called brake sway control, which Tata says makes it much safer. You also get two airbags and at the rear, you get ISOFIX for your child's seat. Those wide opening doors, super nifty to get in and out of. I wonder why not more manufacturers do this because it's just a sensible thing, isn't it? You rarely find me in the back seat because I usually spend time somewhere there driving the pants of cars. But this is a more sensible review, so I thought I'd get in the back and actually talk about the amount of space that is here. Because look, Tata Motors has always been the king of packaging. Look at the amount of space the Nano had, or the original Indica. And it's the same thing with this as well. Now this is set in my driving position, which is slightly further set back than what you normally would have people drive at. And I look, I still have wiggle room for my legs and my knees have space and I have headspace left over. I have well, this lovely large armrest here so I can rest my arm comfortably and the person sitting next to me can as well. This is a very spacious space in general at the back seat and that's what you need because this at the end of the day is going to be a family car, it's going to be a sensible car and uh, I can't find anything wrong with the back seat at all. I mean the seat's well bolstered at the thighs, back support's great, big headrest to sort of stop your head from flopping around like a rag doll. You've just got everything ticked off. And that's what Tata Motors really knows how to do very, very well. If I did have one complaint though, it would have to be the lack of rear AC vents. With the summers getting hotter and hotter every year, a car without rear AC vents is just too warm at the rear sometimes. I've been driving the Tata Punch now for about half a day and um, should I start with the good news or the bad news? Well, I think let's get optimistic and let's start with the good stuff because there is one big, great chunk of good stuff to talk about. The right quality in the Punch. Oh my God, Tata Motors, you guys have absolutely nailed this one. This is a knockout punch in your favor. Yes, boxing reference, I know, I just had to do it. They've really, really made the suspension setup on this absolutely great. It is one of the best ride qualities that I've had in a long, long time in anything that's um, the most affordable and mass market. It sort of irons out everything, bad roads, potholes, speed breakers. You can literally take them at speed and you don't feel a thing. On the flip side, yes, because suspension setup is slightly softer, it does compromise the handling a fair bit. So don't expect to hit any corners really hard anytime soon in the punch. It doesn't like that. The other thing that's a bit lacking on the Tata Punch is that engine. Now, on paper, the 1.2 liter naturally aspirated motor, and it's only petrol, there is no diesel option, makes 86 horsepower and gets 113 newton meters of torque. And we've had this engine before in the Tiago and the Tigor. And this one's the manual, so it's the more responsive gearbox. And it just isn't enough. I mean, to sort of potter around town and to sort of just cruise on the highway at 100 kilometers an hour, this is great. But um, in terms of sort of overtaking people or getting there, you know, on an incline or just getting to 100 quickly, there just isn't enough power. Tata Motors, you really need to put that turbo engine in this. Or you know what? You know what I really, really like? I'm sorry I'm going to say this. Put that Nexon EV powertrain in this. This is the perfect little electric car for the Indian market. Or it could be Tata Motors. Come on, do it. But for now, as I mentioned, running around the city, you will not feel that lack of power. Running around on the highway at 100, when you're cruising on like an open highway, you won't feel that lack of power. It's only when you need to put your foot down and overtake somebody 
or get up an incline a little bit quicker or just get to a certain speed a little bit faster it just doesn't do it as well as it should i mean 86 horsepower isn't a small figure i'm struggling to see why this car takes 16 and a half seconds to get to 100. now some of you might wonder if tata should have plonked in a diesel but i think this is the right move to have it only as a petrol as of now as even with prices per liter being what they are a diesel market in this sort of an ultra price sensitive segment i think is just too small to mess with okay i'm gonna be very very candid and honest now and i started my day off really genuinely wondering if there was even a little bit of space in the data motors lineup with the Tiago and the Tigor and the Altros and the Nexon for something like the punch to exist. And I was wondering whether there was in the general Indian context a place for the punch. And after spending half a day, I'm now genuinely worried about the other products in the Tata Motors lineup because I have a niggling feeling that this car is going to be one of Tata Motors' greatest hits in the coming months and years. I think Tata has really, really got this formula absolutely lined out. You know what? We've been making these puns and jokes about a knockout punch through the video. This is a knockout punch. I mean, yes, it will affect sales of Tata's own products, but this is also going to cannibalize into a whole bunch of competition, especially people are looking at just the general hatchback under the 10 lakh rupee mark because all the small SUVs have now become more expensive this is going to fill that void and fill that void really well it looks good people turn their heads and look at it not just because it's new but because it's well proportioned it just is a nice looking car it's got this nice interior it's simple it's got well a lot of tech it drives decently well with the exception of maybe feeling underpowered at times rides phenomenally well there's a decent amount of space and it ticks most boxes you know what tata motors Price this right, and you have a massive winner on your hand. So now I know why they called it Punch. This thing might just end up knocking the daylights out of a fair few cars. <laughs>